Oh yeah. Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to Mostly Pizza. My name's Ivan and today I'll be showing you a couple of different pizzas I make on the Uni. I'll show you some tips on what I do to make them come out great. I'll show you the preparation of the pizza as well as what it looks like while cooking it. I'll show you how long it takes and what settings I'm using to make for the best results. The first thing you'll want to do is get the Uni started and warmed up. Do this about 20 minutes before you are ready to actually use the oven. I have a cover on my oven to protect it from the weather since I always have it outside. I've also set up a natural gas line and if you're curious on how to do that check out my unboxing video in the description below on how I went about setting that up if you're curious. If you have a gas line like me make sure you have the gas flowing to the uni. If not make sure your propane tank has the valve open. Okay now you'll want to start up the uni and set it up to the highest temperature. You'll need to turn the dial and as you do that you'll hear a click, which will be the spark that is igniting the gas. You'll then want to set it to the 45 degree location for the highest temperature. Preheating the oven this way will help make sure that the base of the oven gets super hot. And a really hot base means that you'll get a thoroughly cooked dough that's nice and fluffy on the inside with a really crispy crust on the bottom. Knowing that we have about 20 minutes before our oven is fully preheated, let's go ahead and start preparing our pizzas. You'll want to start by prepping your work surface with a good amount of flour. I use a medium grind cornmeal and flour mixture. Typically I don't like rolling out the dough. However, in this case I am using a Trader Joe's dough and I've noticed that it bubbles up a bit too much in the oven for my liking. So I go ahead and just roll out the dough to help pop out some of those air pockets. In this case I've got just enough dough for about a 14 inch to 15 inch pizza. Each pack of dough that I've seen comes with about 484 grams of dough, which is enough for exactly one pizza. For the first pizza, I'm using a garlic and herb dough with pizza sauce I made the night before and some pesto for the base. Then I'll use some whole milk, low moisture mozzarella that I shredded earlier for my cheese base. The toppings we'll have on this pizza are pepperoni and salami and topped with some finely shredded Parmesan cheese. Now that my first pizza is ready to go, I turn the temperature on the oven to the lowest setting. You want to make sure it's been at least 20 minutes at this point to ensure the oven has gotten plenty hot. By turning down the temperature, you'll be able to have the base of the pizza fully cooked and crispy, while staying light and fluffy on the inside and not burning the top of the pizza. It's sometimes very hard to find that balance. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, this oven gets very hot, so you have to think about cooking your pizza differently than you would in your own home oven. Once you've gone ahead and shimmied your pizza into the oven, you'll want to make sure that you rotate the pizza 45 degrees every 30 seconds or so to ensure even cooking. Looking from the outside of the oven in, it's hottest on the far left side. That's where the heating elements are, so you'll want to pay attention to that area. The left side, and naturally, closest to the opening, tend to be the cold spots. Rotating your pizza will ensure an even cook. In total, with cooking it this way, the pizza was done in about three minutes and 19 seconds. And as you can see, it turned out pretty great. Next, I slid my pizza onto a nice cutting board surface. I'm using an older pizza peel that I no longer use, and I cut it into eight slices. You can see here that the pizza is fully cooked through with some good leopardine on the bottom. The crust is nice and orange tinted, and the toppings are perfectly cooked. All right, now for the next pizza. Once again, prep your surface and start stretching your dough. Make sure you're stretching from the middle and pushing outward to help create a nice crust on the edge. You want to make sure you do this before you roll out the dough, like I'm doing here. If not, you'll end up with a very flat pizza with no edge or crust. From there, I added some of my flour and cornmeal mixture to the peel that I used, and I transferred the dough to it. I then threw some of my pizza sauce that I made the night before, Again, it's a simple sauce. It's just whole peeled San Marzano tomatoes, some tomato paste, some garlic, salt, and oregano, all blended up and stored in the fridge overnight. 
This pizza in particular is just gonna be a standard margarita style, so just cheese, tomato, with some fresh basil added after it's cooked. So what I didn't show you before is that after I took the pizza out of the oven, I actually turned it back up to the highest temperature. This makes sure that the base gets as hot as possible. So in between each pizza, make sure you turn it up to the hottest temperature again. When you go to put the next pizza back in, just turn it all the way down to the very lowest temperature again, so that way you get that same baking experience. If you wanted some proof that this oven gets pretty hot, you can see here that there's some burning going on in the oven. What you see burning is some cornmeal and flour mixture. I apparently had too much on the pizza peel and it came off in the oven and ignited. Not really a big deal, just make sure you don't put your pizza right on top of the burning parts. Again, make sure you're rotating the pizza every 30 seconds or so. It will burn, and it will burn fast, so keep a close eye on it. This pizza in particular took about three minutes to make. All right, just like before, slide your pizza onto a cutting surface and top with some fresh basil. We amazingly had some left in our garden after some neglect the last couple of months. Then cut the pizza into eight even slices. You can see once again, the pizza crust is nice and fluffy and it has a nice leopard spotted base. It's nice and fluffy yet still rigid and not droopy. All right, for our third pizza, we're making a red sauce and pesto base with some mozzarella cheese. I'm using a bit of my leftover cheddar cheese from my Detroit style pizza I made the week before and some ricotta cheese to finish it off. And of course, I always top it with Parmesan. So this is a four cheese pizza. I had a bit of homemade chili oil to give it a little bit more kick as well. Making sure your oven temp is turned all the way down, slide your pizza in with a little shake shake and cook away. Rotate every 30 seconds and this pizza took three minutes to make. I personally love it when the cheese com comes out and has some browning on top. That's when you know it's made just right. Just like every other time, slide your pizza onto a cutting surface, cut into eight even slices, and you're ready to eat. Something I haven't really mentioned yet is I do like to let the pizza rest for a couple of minutes before actually serving it. Not only does this help prevent the top of your mouth getting burned, but it also helps make sure the toppings solidify a little bit better. Okay, last pizza. And now I'm prepping my surface just as before. This time I'm using a dough that is left over from a Chicago style pizza I made a few days prior. This is much drier dough with cornmeal and butter in the base instead of an olive oil that I typically use. It was only a tiny bit of dough so I wasn't sure how big the pizza would be. Once I realized it wasn't going to be all that much I decided to flatten it out as much as possible to make a really thin crust pizza. The dough just so happened to keep sticking to the cutting board since I was applying so much pressure to make it thin. Then, just as before, prep your peel, transfer your dough, and start adding the toppings. For this last pizza, I'm just adding a light sauce, the last of my cheese, and the last of my pepperoni. Which I also ran out of, so I used the last of my salami as well. Nothing fancy. And for the last time, make sure the oven is set to the lowest temperature. This time, the dough was a bit more challenging to transfer to the oven, so I used a spatula to help make sure it was loosened up before the transfer. It took me about four or five tries before finally being successful in moving it to the oven. Be sure you rotate your pizza every 30 seconds. This one actually only took about a minute and 45 seconds total to cook since it's a much thinner pizza. 
However, I did want the toppings to cook a little bit more, so I popped it in the oven with the pizza peel and lifted it to the very top just to help the top cook. This set the pizza on fire briefly due to the heat, but didn't really ruin the pizza. You can see that it's a tiny bit charred, but that's not a big deal. I'll eat those slices myself. Last, but definitely not least, make sure you turn off the oven and turn off the gas. If you have propane, make sure that's turned off as well. So, here we are at the end. I hope this video was useful in seeing how a couple of pizzas were made. Overall, I think it took me about an hour to an hour and a half to make all four pizzas. However, I did somewhat take my time. I cleaned the dishes in between, and filming obviously took some time as well. It's well worth it, makes a lot of food for the family, and it's not a crazy cost. We were actually doing some math during the filming and we figured that each pizza cost about $5 or so to make, at most. This is including buying the dough at $2 each. If I made all the dough myself, it would be much less, probably around $1.50 per pizza. As always, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, please make sure you subscribe. I plan to do more videos like this in the future. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks again, and thanks for watching. Until next time.